I'm Tom Coughlin from the IEEE Consumer Electronics Society, and I'm here with uh, Dr. Sarap Bunya from the University of uh, Florida in Gainesville, and he gave a very interesting talk, uh, keynote talk at the 2018 ICCE, uh, going into hardware security primarily with uh, Internet of Things devices. So i uh, got a couple questions I'd like to ask you about that. First of all, is there any way that you can um, use software to secure a device whose hardware has been compromised in some way? That's a very, very powerful question, Tom. Yes, there has been effort to design systems, design trusted system with untrustworthy components. Mm -hmm. That's an emerging research area. Now, software can definitely help. Mm -hmm. okay. And one of the ways software can help is that if you have untrusted components, mm -hmm. you can either do computing multiple times. Mm -hmm. For example, if there is a malware, you can expect that the malware would not be affecting your output all the time. Mm -hmm. So you can actually compute multiple times and then mm -hmm. do a majority voting. Mm -hmm. Or you can have multiple untrusted components doing the same thing, mm -hmm. and then you can try to do voting mm -hmm. like um, solutions to, to give you trusted results. Right. So this is an emerging research topic. Um, as I said earlier, people thought the hardware is trustworthy. There's mm -hmm. no problem in the hardware. Mm -hmm. And then the only problem can happen in software. But now that the hardware is untrustworthy, you mm -hmm. need to come up with solutions, and these solutions can be either in hardware or in software. So, um, you know, you, t you talked about methods of doing verification and trying to find out if there's a problem. Uh, how, how certain can those be, and how long does it take to do that process with, uh, with a board, say, a board of hardware with a lot of components on it? It's a very difficult process. Hardware trust verification, that's what we call, is an emerging problem, mm -hmm. and there is no industry standard solution to verify trust for hardware. Mm -hmm. These are research topics. Mm -hmm. For even cheap level hardware, it's, it's extremely complex because think about billion transistor chip and only few can be used to Im inject a malware mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a needle in haystack problem. Okay. And detecting those are, are not easy. And if you want to do that at the printed circuit board level, that's, that's even more more tough. So there are solutions which can give you high confidence but not a guarantee mm. that it's trustworthy. And that's why, uh, why you need runtime solutions. And that's basically your last line of defense. Mm -hmm. You can try to monitor abnormal behavior at runtime. Mm -hmm. And if you can find something, then you can actually try to do recomputing or, or you can raise a flag that, hey, this computing is not trustworthy and don't use it. So if, if, uh, what advice would you give to a hardware designer to try to build a system that would be hard to, um, you know, to fake or to uh, uh, put in a back door you know, that could be compromised? What, would you, what advice do you give to a designer? Yeah, so, so you have to do something at the design stage mm -hmm. to make sure that your verification is better, mm -hmm. to make sure that your runtime monitoring is better. Unli uh, unless you have some design solutions built into the hardware, mm -hmm. it becomes extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. So if I'm designing a new hardware, mm -hmm. then we have to incorporate some hardening techniques so that it's difficult to inject a malware, or you have to in incorporate some monitoring hardware inside the chip or inside the board mm -hmm. so that it can help you to monitor. Mm -hmm. But without that, it becomes much more difficult okay. to, to, um, to have trustworthy computing from your system. Well, thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Tom. Yep. It's my pleasure.